Hello, everybody. My name is Lian Pan. I'm a senior manager of marketing at GeneScript, leading protein and antibody services. Thank you all for attending this webinar on challenges and solutions of recombinant protein expression and purification. To ensure the count quality, all of you are muted to minimize the background noise. If you have any questions during my talk, please send your questions through the chat box at the right lower corner of the screen. I will address your questions all together at the end. Here is a brief introduction of my background. I graduated from UPenn with a PhD in cellular and molecular biology. I did my postdoc at NIH in the field of translational medicine. Both my PhD and postdoc research used purified proteins for either functional assays or protein-protein interaction studies. If your research also needs purified proteins, hope this webinar expands your knowledge on protein expression and purification so that you can speed up your research by avoiding potential pitfalls. Here are the topics that I will walk you through in today's seminar. When you have a protein expression and purification project, you may face a series of decision points. The first one is to choose the expression system. In this section, I will go over what to consider when choosing the expression uh, system and what the advantages and disadvantages are for each expression system. The second one is how to optimize your protein expression. In this section, I will go through the parameters to optimize and the services available, as well as a case study on protein expression optimization. It's followed by protein refolding and protein purification, in which I will talk about the challenges and the corresponding solutions on protein refolding and purification. After that, I will share a few case studies on difficult to express proteins. In the end, I will go through our most popular protein services and how GeneScript stands out from our competitors. As we all knew, there are two steps in protein expression. One is transcription from DNA to mRNA. The other is translation from mRNA to protein. Multiple challenges can arise in the process. The first one is whether your protein can be expressed solubly. Soluble expression is the most reliable way to obtain functional proteins. The second one is whether the expressed protein has the correct conformation, which is critical for the protein function. Main contributing factors on protein folding are the number of disulfide bonds and the presence of chaperones in the expression system. In the case of protein expressed as including bodies, protein refolding will be needed. The third one is the production efficiency, in another word, the yield per culture volume. The fourth one is the protein purity. Some applications require high purity protein. Some has less stringent requirement on the protein purity. Some proteins such as membrane protein and toxic proteins are more challenging on expression and purification due to their intrinsic characters. Let's first take a look at the steps of recombinant protein production and the impacting factors. On the left side are the steps that are commonly included for recombinant protein expression. Starting with protein name, and you decide whether to express the whole protein or a fragment of the protein. The steps afterwards are obtain DNA, create expression clone, express the construct in a chosen expression system, purify the expressed protein, and characterize the purified protein to make sure that the purified protein is the desired one. On the right side are the impacting factors. 
which spread into almost every step of protein expression. Protein sequence is the most influential factor in protein expression, but expression system, vector, host strain, and expression conditions all contribute to the final protein production. As the factors impacting protein expression spread into the entire process of protein production, you may face a serial of decision points in your recombinant protein production project. First, you need to decide whether to express a full length or a fragment of the protein, and how are you going to obtain the cDNA by traditional PCR or advanced gene synthesis methods. Nowadays, most people go with gene synthesis, as you can synthesize any sequence you want, and you can also incorporate coda optimization to optimize the protein expression from the very beginning on the sequence. One important decision in your protein production project is to decide which expression system to choose. You also need to choose the expression vector and decide whether to use a tag. If you do use a tag, then you need to decide which tag to use and place it on which terminus, N or C terminus. The next decision would be the expression host and the expression matrix for the optimal protein expression. We recommend doing a small-scale test expression before the scale up. It will save your time and valuable resources in the long run. You also need to choose purification methods and the protein refolding strategies if needed, as well as the desired endotoxin level in the sample. Once you obtain your purified protein, how would you characterize it to make sure it's the right one? So many questions and so many decision points. Because every protein is different, unfortunately, there are no standard answers to these questions. The specific strategies must be worked out for each individual protein by keeping its intended application in mind. Before choosing the appropriate expression system, let's first take a quick look at the available expression systems. Traditionally, recombinant protein have been expressed in vivo, in bacteria, insect, yeast, and the mammalian systems. In recent years, recombinant proteins can also be made in vitro using cell-free translation system. However, this in vitro system is costly and not suitable for scale-up protein production. Researchers typically choose among those four in vivo expression systems. We will discuss the pros and cons of each in the next two slides. When you choose an expression system, please make your decision by combining all these factors. First, on the protein property side, you need to consider the molecular weight of the protein, the number of disulfide bonds, whether the protein is subject to post-translational modifications, and whether you need homogeneous protein expression. Secondly, you need to consider the intended application of the purified protein. Is it for structural biology studies, functional assays, used for therapeutic purpose, or as antigen for antibody production, or for protein-protein interaction studies. Protein property and its intended applications are equally important when choosing an expression system. As every project comes with a budget, you also need to consider the yield of protein in the chosen expression system and also its associated cost. Keep those factors in mind. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each expression system. Bacteria expression system is the most inexpensive one among the four. It has the simple, well-known genetics. It's easy to manipulate and easy to scale up with the fastest production time. However, as a prokaryotic expression system, 
its lack of efficient post-translation modifications, and may have a codon usage bias when express some eukaryotic proteins, causing insoluble expression, low yield, and activity. It's also difficult to express proteins with high molecular weight. If your target protein is subject to post-translational modifications or has high molecular, molecular weight, you need to consider to use eukaryotic expression systems like yeast, insect, and mammalian cells. Yeast expression system can carry diverse post-translational modifications. However, if your protein is subject to glycosylation, you'd better consider insect or mammalian expression system, as yeast expression system may lead to improper or excessive glycosylation. On the other hand, yeast expression system is low cost and suitable for industry-scale fermentation. Insect expression system has good secretion and is especially suitable for some toxic protein production. However, the production time using insect expression system is long and the cost is relatively high. Mammalian expression system provides the most reliable post-translational modifications and is an excellent system for the bioactive protein production. On the flip side, mammalian expression has longer production time and high cost and the protein yield is relatively low compared to other expression systems. Regarding intended applications, theoretically, proteins intended for structural biology studies, functional assays, and antigen production can be produced in either system. And for protein-protein interaction studies, we recommend using bacteria or yeast expression system. For therapeutic proteins, we recommend yeast or mammalian system. As I mentioned earlier, every protein is different, and each project has a specific requirement on the protein. Thus, the final decision has to be made by considering all the impacting factors. By statistics, bacteria expression is still the most popular one but we see that mammalian expression is catching up in the drug discovery field. No matter which expression system you finally choose for your target protein expression, at GeneScript, we have all the expression systems available, and each is equipped with our proprietary technologies and specific guarantees to ensure the quality and the quantity of the purified proteins. I want to point out that all these listed services here are starting from gene synthesis, and the price includes the gene synthesis fee. Of note, the price listed by most of our competitors doesn't include gene synthesis fee. For a 2 kb gene, it's easily to add up $700. With our packages, what we need from you is just the sequence of the protein and we take care of the rest and deliver you the purified protein at the specified purity and amount in each package. For our guaranteed packages, if we fail to deliver the protein at the specified purity and amount, it will be no charge to you, so you are risk-free. For example, with our back power, the bacteria expression guaranteed packages, you submit your order with the protein sequence. We will deliver three make purified protein at your desired purity within six to eight weeks, with price starting from $2,200. In the last slide of this seminar, a promo code will be revealed, which will make the deal even better. So stay to the end. In the circumstances that you need protein urgently to meet deadlines, we also offer fast gene to protein services that deliver you the purified protein in just four weeks, guaranteed. To know how much exactly your specific project would cost, you can contact our PhD level technical account managers for a free quote. 
You may say it's nice you have all the expression systems available, but what if I cannot decide which system to use, as I did not know which system will work best for my protein? Not a problem. We recently launched a new service called Protential, which is a protein expression evaluation and optimization service that can help you practically decide which expression system is the best for your protein expression. If you already choose your expression system, Protential services can help you to evaluate whether your target protein actually expresses in your chosen system before your scale up protein production to avoid waste on your time and valuable resources. With Protential, if your construct showed decent expression in your chosen system, you can just add $600 for one liter expression and purification, which is a cost-effective way for your target protein expression. In case that the expression of your target protein is very low or insoluble, Protential silver and good packages can help to optimize the expression conditions that can give you the most robust soluble expression of your target protein. At GeneScript, we offer comprehensive one-stop services that include gene synthesis, subcloning, protein expression evaluation and optimization, all the way to large-scale protein production and beyond. Shown here is the portfolio of potential services. Standard packages allow you to test your construct in your chosen system, including bacteria, insect, mammalian, or all three systems, starting from just $280. With a couple of hundred dollars, you can eliminate the guesswork from your protein production. The silver package helps you to determine the best expression condition with your construct in the bacterial system by testing eight different conditions that combines different parameters such as temperature, media components, and the inducer concentration. The gold package is the most comprehensive high-throughput protein expression optimization service which tests 48 different uh, conditions and includes optimizations on promoters, host cell strains, and furin partners, as well as those three parameters included in the silver package. Here, I would like to share with you a protein expression optimization case we did. A customer had challenges on expressing a 28 kD protein in large scale. The yield was low, only 1 mg per liter, and the protein can only be purified from the soluble part. The customer needs a large amount of purified protein, therefore the 1,000 liter fermentation and purification is needed. With the yield of 1 mg per liter, even with 1,000 liter fermentation, it would only produce 1 gram protein, far from his desired amount and it would be too costly if increasing the culture volume. Therefore, the protein expression needs to be optimized so that the production efficiency can be improved. Therefore, the potential gold package was applied to this case, and here is the list of parameters we optimize for the customer. We also optimize the purification conditions to increase the protein recovery rate. In total, we screened 48 different conditions by combining those parameters listed in the last slide using high throughput expression screening process. Here is the result. By optimizing T7 promoter and induction conditions such as temperature, inducer concentration, and induction time, the production efficiency is doubled from 1 mg to 2 mg per liter. By further optimizing 4 promoter and the induction conditions, the yield increased to 5 mg per liter. By continue optimizing growth conditions, 
the yield increased to 6 megaliter, and we also did seeding density optimization, which increased the yield to 12 megaliter, which is 12 uh, fourths of the original production efficiency. This case gives you a glimpse of our expertise on protein expression optimization. Whenever you encounter challenges in your protein production, don't struggle it yourself. Leave them to our protein experts. By now, we have gone through the first two topics, choose the expression system and optimize protein expression. Let's go to the third one, protein refolding. Refolding is needed when protein expressed as inclusion bodies. First, what is an inclusion body? When E. coli is transformed to manufacture large amounts of recombinant protein, the protein sometimes form dense aggregates of insoluble misfolded proteins, known as inclusion bodies. Inclusion body is not necessarily a negative factor. The benefit from a, a production aspect of inclusion bodies is that they allow high protein concentrations, protect sensitive proteins from proteolytic degradation, and protect the cell from any toxic proteins. However, the big challenge is to solubilize and refold the protein into its correct active form. The fact is that all the information necessary for folding the peptide chain into its native structure is contained in the primary amino acid sequence of the peptide. And the native form of a protein has the thermodynamically most stable structure. The challenge is that there are vastly too many different possible conformations for a protein to fold by a random search. Consider just for the peptide backbone, there are three conformations per amino acid in the unfolded state. For 100 amino acid protein, we have so many conformations that it would be impossible to do the correct folding based on a random search. The good news is that a new view of protein folding suggested that there is no single route but a large ensemble of structures follow a many-dimensional funnel to its native structure. Therefore, practically, we just need to find the conditions that facilitate this process of protein folding to its native structure. At GeneScript, our in-house scientists developed our proprietary protein refolding technology called FoldArt. It first analyzes the biochemical and biophysical properties of the target protein, and then selects particular refolding strategies based on protein sequence and its structural properties. And an optimized refolding buffer will be screened out. Regarding the denaturate removal, five different techniques, dilution, dialysis, dye filtration, gel filtration, and chromatography chromatography will be employed to remove the denaturant. Refolding result will be validated by SDS page, HPLC, and all functional assays. The most challenging part for protein refolding is that refolding conditions must be optimized for each individual protein. There is no standard rule. And the key is the selection of the optimal refolding buffer. When you make refolding buffers, you need to take consideration of these important variables that contribute to the correct protein refolding, including buffer type, pH, ionic strength, additives that are often in combination. With our proprietary food art protein refolding technology, over 95% of the included bodies can be solubilized and refolded. Here is an example of protein refolding we did with human interleukin-5. 
the active form of human interleukin-5 is the disulfide bound linked di uh, home dimer. At the SDS page you showed here, the first line was the unfolded protein. Condition 1 to 5 was using different refolding buffers. As you can see, condition 4 gave the most abundant refolded protein at the right size. After refolding, human interleukin-5 was further purified by ion exchange separation, and you can see that the final product showed a very clean protein dimer band on the gel. If you ever need protein refolding services, I encourage you to use GeneScript Fold Art service. Don't try those tedious refolding optimization processes yourself. It's just not worth your time. Leave it to our experts. Protein expression, probably the most critical step in your recombinant protein production. However, protein purification is almost equally important in obtaining the protein at your desired purity and amount. Let's quickly go through some basics of protein purification. There are a variety of uh, protein purification methods, including affinity columns such as GST, NICO, protein A, G, L, resins columns, etc. And also ion exchange, size exclusion, and hydrophobic interaction, chromatography, HIC. For big protein, we also apply double tag strategy for purification. The bottom pictures showed a few routinely used instruments as gene script for protein purification. Affinity chromatography is probably the most commonly used protein purification method. To use affinity column, proteins need to be expressed with one or sometimes two affinity tags. The commonly used affinity tags include polyhase, usually 6 hase, GST, MBP, flag, and SOMO tag. Each tag has its corresponding matrices and illusion uh, conditions. For example, the matrices for his tagged protein would be nickel resin, and the elution buffer would be 10 to 250 millimore amidazole. And the GST tagged protein can be purified through glutathione agrospace and eluted with reduced glutathione condition. Purification can be carried by either columns or batches, as illustrated here on the right. If you would like protein with up tag, the tags can be removed by site-specific protease during the purification step. Given that a restriction enzyme digestion site was incorporated when making the protein expression construct. For certain applications, endotoxin, one type of the impurities present in protein samples, may need to be well controlled at a certain limit. First, what are endotoxins? Endotoxins, also known as LPS, are large molecules found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria, which elicit strong immune responses in animals. To measure endotoxin levels in the protein sample, either gel clot method or chromogenic method can be used. To keep the endotoxin level under the required limit in the sample, there are three routinely used methods to remove endotoxin. One is affinity-based polymycin B, PMB method, such as GeneScript's toxin eraser, a modified PMB-based affinity matrix that allows highly efficient endotoxin removal down to 0.1 EU per mil. The endotoxin can also be removed by size exclusion, SEC method. As the endotoxin molecular weight is typically around 10 kD, and the target protein is usually much bigger than that. IEC can also be used for endotoxin removal, as when the pH of the solution is higher than 2, 
the charge of the endotoxin is negative. The table here showed three cases of our endotoxin removal services we did for the customers whose samples all had very high endotoxin levels. Each case we used 3 ml resins on 15 ml samples and we reduced the endotoxin levels up to 2 million folds with the final endotoxin levels all below 0.1 EU per microgram. If it's required, we could further reduce the endotoxin level to less than 0.01 EU per microgram. In fact, at GeneScript, we offer endotoxin removal services in three tiers. Endotoxin levels less than 1 EU per microgram, less than 0.1 EU per microgram, and less than 0.01 EU per microgram. You can choose either one based on your application need. So far, we have gone through those major steps in the recombinant protein expression and purification process. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, there are some proteins that are more challenging than the others on expression and purification due to their intrinsic uh, features. Those difficult to express proteins include membrane protein, toxic protein, and prone to degrade protein, etc. I will walk you through the expression strategies on those difficult to express protein one by one with some case studies in the next few slides. Membrane pro protein, by definition, are proteins that interact with biological membranes which are targets of over 50% of all medi uh, modern medicine drugs. In most genomes, 20 to 30% of all genes encode membrane protein, so there is uh, probably a good chance for you to encounter a membrane protein expression project. As membrane proteins are part of the membrane, it's quite challenging to express them solubly in E. coli. Therefore, for membrane proteins such as GPCRs are often expressed in insect cells or mammalian cells, or a cell-free expression system can be used if the required amount of protein is not much. To purify the target membrane protein from the membrane and the other membrane proteins, appropriate detergent, phosphate lipid, and nanodisc need to be practically determined. So how are membrane proteins produced? The left side chart listed the workflow of the membrane protein expression and purification using baclovirus insect cell expression system. The first step is the gene synthesis and subcloning the synthesized gene into a transfer vector to generate the recombinant backmid DNA that had the target gene incorporated. It's then followed by transfecting insect cells with the recombinant backmid DNA to produce the baclovirus, then amplifying the baclovirus for large-scale expression. After the expression, the cells are harvested and homogenized, and the membrane was collected by centrifugation. GeneScript membrane protein services can deliver you either purified membrane protein or cell piss, or recombinant baculovirus. We can also help you with high throughput screening of membrane proteins and deliver you the expression evaluation report only, whichever you need. This is a case study for membrane protein production. The data showed here are the Western blot analysis of the expression of GPCR. The first and the second lens are whole cell lysed before and after sonication. You can see that sonication did not cause much damage to the protein. Lens 3 and 4 are supernatant and pilot up centrifugation of cell lysate for 10 minutes at 8,000 RPM. Lens 5 is the supernatant after ultra centrifugation for 45 minutes. And you can see that the supernatant barely contains GPCR protein. 
The lens six is the palette after ultra centrifugation, which contains the most GPCR protein. Lens seven and eight are negative controls. Just to give you a little background of the project, this was a 25 liter expression of GPCR, and the expression level was uh, 30 to 40 mg per liter. And we successfully delivered the cell paste to the customers in just six weeks. Another category of protein falls into difficult to express proteins is toxic protein. Toxic protein defined here as proteins that cause cell death or severe cultivation and maintenance defects during the growth phase when their genes were introduced into E. coli. It's mainly due to leaking expression. It's estimated that about 80% protein growth and expression problems are caused by the toxicity of the proteins. Technologies have been developed to enable E. coli cells to tolerate the highly toxic gene during the growth phase. This includes selection of the optimal promoter, suppression of basal expression from leaking inducible promoters, tight control of plasmid copy numbers, and protein production as inactive, insoluble forms. These technologies will ensure rapid and quantitative production of the highly toxic protein before cell dies. The last category of protein falls into the difficult to express uh, proteins is the prone to degrade protein. This type of protein didn't present challenge until after you obtain the purified protein. Here is an example with a customer in the diagnostic field. This protein was successfully expressed in 293 T cells. The problem was first identified after we delivered the protein to the customer. The protein concentration customer measured is inconsistent with what we measured before delivery. We immediately started the troubleshooting process and double-checked almost every step. As shown on the right up corner, the western blot showed certain levels of degradation with the protein. The top band is the non-degraded protein with the correct molecular weight. The two lower bands are proteins at different levels of degradation. The first line is the protein with DNA treatment, and the second line is the protein without DNA treatment indicating that DNA is only partially responsible for the protein degradation and it's the protein itself is prone to degrade it. Therefore, besides removing DNA and adding protease inhibitors to every step in the production process, we did further optimization on buffer components, added protein stabilizers, Lipholize the protein immediately after purification. We also test the storage condition and found that the protein is more stable at minus 20 than 4 degree. The bottom western blot shows the intact protein after the process optimization. This customer was very happy with the final result and placed more protein orders with us. Protein expression market is a very competitive market. Oftentimes, you have multiple choices on the vendor. You may wonder why you should choose GeneScript's protein services. Here are a few reasons. The first one is that we are equipped with our core in-house technologies for expression optimization and improved production efficiency which enable us to deliver you high-quality protein at low cost. For all our protein expression projects, we can utilize our proprietary optimal gene technology to do the code optimization, which typically boosts protein expression five-folds or more. 
In addition, we have our optimized technologies for each expression system. Back power for bacteria expression, yeast high for yeast expression, bacuvance for bacular virus insect expression, and manpower for mammalian expression. It's a technology licensed from National Research Council, NRC of Canada, for rapid recombinant protein production with high yield. For big molecular weight protein, we use double tax strategy. In summary, our service is backed up by our advanced technologies to ensure the high quality of protein. Another big advantage of GeneScript protein services is that we are one-stop service from sequence to purified protein. What we need from you just the protein sequence. We start your project with gene synthesis, in which quota optimization is typically incorporated. We guarantee the amount and, and the purity of the protein. I barely see other companies offer such comprehensive guarantees. With our full spectrum of expression systems available and optimized technologies, no matter which one you choose, we can deliver high-quality protein at low cost to you. Research labs seldom have the capacity for large-scale protein expression and purification, as large-scale production requires expertise and special equipment, as shown here. GeneScript offer flexible production skills from milligram to gram level with faster runtime. From sequence to purified protein, you can get it in as little as four weeks. No other companies and can beat us on such faster runtime and comprehensive guarantees. No matter which kind of uh, protein production projects you have, you can find a solution here at GeneScript. We offer a variety of protein services covering almost every aspect of recombinant protein expression and purification, from full portfolios of expression systems to stable cell lines, from protein expression evaluation and optimization to large-scale protein production to protein crystals for structural biology studies. We also equipped with the largest capacity on high throughput protein variant services. We can produce over 1,000 protein variants in just 30 days. For some really difficult to express proteins in vivo, we offer alternative chemical protein synthesis services. In summary, GeneScript is your one-stop shopping place for all your protein services. We are flexible and capable enough to accommodate your specific need on your protein production. GeneScript has uh, delivered over 5,000 proteins in four expression systems with over 95% successful rate. The left side chart shows you the number of proteins expressed in bacteria, insect, yeast, and the mammalian cells separately. The right side pie shows the percentages of different types of proteins that have been successfully produced at GeneScript, including some difficult proteins such as transmembrane proteins, proteases, etc. Besides protein services, we offer a broad range of services to make your research easy. This slide gives you a general overview of the services we offer at GeneScript, including gene synthesis and subcloning, peptide synthesis, protein expression and purification, custom antibody production, discovery biology services, and stable cell lines, all with the goal to make research easy. More than 9,000 peer-reviewed journal articles have cited GeneScript services and products, 
leaking gene script, the most frequently cited biology CRO in the world. I'm very happy to be part of it. This wraps up my slides. Here is the list of our upcoming new webinars. Due to the high demands on the previous webinars, we recently started the second round. In case that you missed any before and would like to attend, please check out our website for schedule. Also, as promised, here is the promo code that can be applied to your next order with spec power guaranteed packages. Instead of guaranteed 3 mg purified protein with this code, we will automatically upgrade to 5 mg, a value of $2,000 or more. This promo will be expired on August 15, 2014. Thank you for your time and attention. I see that questions have been coming in all along. First question, do you use T7 auto-induction? Uh, yes, sometimes we do use T7 auto-induction, but not as often as IPTG induction. Another question, which double tag did you use? When situations need double tag, we commonly use his and flag for the double tag. Question. Does uh, co-expression of co-chaperones really help in increasing the solubility of the protein in bacteria? Yes, it does. Based on our experience, Expressing pairs of chaperones or a single chaperone can help the folding of the protein and thus increase the solubility of the protein. Another solution is uh, to express enzymes that are helpful for the formation of the disulfide bonds, which can also help the solubility of the protein as well. Question. I induce my protein when the OD of the bacteria culture is between 0.5 to 0.6. In case the OD reaches between 0.9 to 1, is it still worth inducing the culture? Yes. In fact, for some cases, induction at higher OD can be better when you have enough energy sources. Sometimes for isotope labeled proteins, induction at higher OD can be very helpful. Question. If my protein has an N-terminal his tag and a PI of 9.5, is it good to purify via NI-NTA column and which buffer to use? I don't think there is a problem. Trees, HEPIS, and the PBS can all be used. As long as the pH of the buffer is significantly different from the PI of the protein, for example, pH 8, it should be fine. Question. Is it important to optimize the codon when expressing E. coli just at the start of the gene, or it should be optimized throughout of the gene, or using host cells with extra plasmids carrying rare tRNA is enough for good expression? Good question. Yes, code optimization for the entire sequence is necessary, although the start of the gene carry more weight. Using a strain like Rosetta or Rare, RIPL, can be also helpful if you are working with a cDNA or amino acid sequence that has a fair amount of residues that have low codon usage percentage. Question. 
my protein is often lost on concentrating using common concentrators. What could be the solution? I have to concentrate at least about 10 mg per mil so that I can use for my application. With your situation, you can use uh, cross-flow equipment to concentrate the protein. The filtration system can have protein attached to the membrane. And it could be the reason that you are losing the protein during the concentrating step. Question, what do you mean by protein stabilizers? I mean, what exactly are used? The protein stabilizers can be glycerol, sabato, mannitol, and sauce, like sodium chloride. BSA can also help on stabilizing the proteins. Question, for membrane protein, I used to purify some from Golgi apparatus, but got many similar unwanted proteins. So how could you ensure the purity of the target membrane protein? To improve the purity of the membrane protein, it's necessary to do detergent screening during the extraction and the purification of the protein. Also, adding a small tag such as haze or flag can be helpful to separate the target protein from the other proteins. Due to the time rest uh, restraint, I'll stop here. Um, please note that all the questions, including those I did not have time to address here, will be posted online. This webinar will also be archived on our website. So please visit our website to take advantage of these resources. Right after this webinar, there will be a quick poll on your screen. Please take a moment to complete. It would be great to hear your feedback. Again, thank you all for your time and attention. And on behalf of GeneScript, we wish you all success in your research.